Do you have to turn on? Your, do you have to turn that one on or not? Uh, my first shot. Yeah, I volunteered um, at one of the county uh, vaccine sites up at West Caldwell Tech School. So I volunteered for the day. And at the end, they had additional, uh, I guess, doses yeah. left over. So the all the volunteers were able to get them. Could you do it even though you got the virus? So the CDC, yeah, yeah, the CDC changed their guidelines. Were you sick? After you had the first one? I had a headache for a couple of days, but not bad. Um, and just sore in the, the spot. The CDC guidelines were originally nine. You can't have it within 90 days. Uh -huh. And then they changed it to once you're symptom free. Yeah, you know, after you've gone through your, your 14 days and then you're symptom free, as long as you're 14 days plus symptom free. So I was outside of that. So you got your first one, so you're going to get your second one in uh, April. I think I'm, 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 I'm not on any of the list, but I know that there are a lot of places where they have well, that's why I signed up to, to, to volunteer here. That was my easiest way to yeah. get there. It was, it was actually very rewarding. I was more or less a greeter. So you're there as people come in the building with their um, appointments, their calendars, make sure they're there at the right place, the right date, time. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of help them get started with registration. And, and they're oh, also so happy. Nice. They're also happy to be there. Yeah. <laughs> were you congratulating people? I mean, when I went through their congrats, they're gonna be not high. Five. I, I was when people were there for their second shot. I said, Congratulations, it's a great day. And they were so happy. Yeah. I said I felt like a casino greeter. <laughs> <laughs> people there with their chips. <laughs> it was it was really quite nice. It was really very nice. Hi guys. Hey Jumana. Hey Jumana. Hi Andrew. I hear you, Michael, talking about your volunteer experience. That I'm hearing the same thing from a lot of people that it was very rewarding. Yeah, it really was. It was terrific. Yeah. My husband's doing it on Saturday. Good. Yeah, I was last Saturday. I did it. It's nice. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll be at a soccer tournament in South Jersey. <laughs> okay. Hi, Tracy. The meeting of the Milburn Short Hills Business Organization Incorporated for Thursday, March 11th, 2021. Meeting is being held both in person and electronically via Zoom. Notice of the time, date, location, and agenda of this meeting to the extent known was provided at least 48 hours prior to the commencement of this meeting in the following manner and pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act by posting such notice in town hall and the township's website by notification to newspapers on December 23rd, 2020, and by providing notice to the township clerk. Whoops. Fatal error. Sorry about that. Made the uh, cardinal mistake of not shutting my phone off. Can I ask everyone to please stand for the salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag. To the flag. of the United, United States, States of America, America. And, and to the, the republic, republic for, for which it stands. stands. One nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Walt. Uh, Tracy, can you do the roll call, please? <clears throat> yes. Um, Jumana Culligan? Here. Tracy Katz Levine? Here. Andrew Morgan? Here. <laughs> Nadej Nickel? Here. Michael Parlavecchio? Here. Richard Wasserman. Here. Stephen Weiner. Here. And Alex McDonald. Here. And Jackie Benjamin Lieberberg. Here. Okay. Uh, 
on our agenda is our mission statement, mission statement, which I'll re read. The purpose of a special improvement district is to promote, grow, and support local businesses, property owners, residents, and visitors. Milburn Township SID ordinance designates a new district management corporation whose mission is to encourage the economic, cultural, and social vitality of Milburn Township through increased marketing and visibility, improved and renewed infrastructure, and local business development and engagement. Uh, we have approval of minutes from the February 11th, 2021 meeting. I believe those have been circulated to everybody for review. If um, anybody has any comments, additions, deletions, corrections, um, let us know. If not, we take a motion uh, to approve those minutes by voice vote. I have a motion. Okay, a second. Second. Okay, seconded. All in favor of approval of those minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Okay. Our first action item is a little different tonight. We are, um, well, first I could say, um, I'm sad to report that our executive director, uh, Ryan Gleason, uh, has tendered a resignation. So we're sad to be losing him. He's decided to take his career in a different direction. And even in a short time, he is, um, he has in fact left a mark and, and, uh, and is continuing to work with us and help us. And we are, uh, this is relatively new news. So we are uh, working on an orderly transition. But what I would like to do is uh, to have a discussion a, on personnel matters uh, concerning his executive um, director position. And for that, I would want to have a, uh, a resolution of this board to uh, first a motion to go into closed session, which would exclude the public for the purpose of uh, just this discussion. There will not be any action taken. Uh, of course, uh, no action taken in closed session, and there will not be any action taken as a result of this uh, as we come out. So if I could have a motion to please go into closed session. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a resolution prepared. Um, all in favor of going into closed session, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, in pre-COVID in, in pre days, we would just close the door, but I'm not sure how we functionally do that in here. Um, we, we actually are going to go into the back conference room. We're going to leave the session open. Okay. All those board members that are currently on, on, on Zoom, you just close out, go into the closed session link, okay? And, and then we'll have to come back into open session once again. Thanks, everybody. Please be patient. Not an hour. Not not a, over my dead body. <laughs> uh, probably more than ten minutes, though. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. They held the flag and ran for the restaurants. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they mentioned at the meeting on Tuesday. 
sure they're going to make it here on the agenda. Oh, I know. But, uh, it's just like a little check. I have no full time contracts. One of our contracts that went out. I don't know. Okay. Okay.
Nice picture. Great. Oh yeah, look at that. Just so I don't forget. <laughs> We're good. Okay. Okay, everybody, we uh, are returned from closed session. I just have a, a motion to return into open session, please. Motion. And a second. Second. Okay, all in favor to return to open session, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Jeff, for the benefit of the record, uh, as stated prior to our closed session, we did uh, go into closed session for um, to discuss subject matter concerning personnel and our executive director position. Minutes of these discussions will be made public uh, as soon as the matters are no longer a confidential nature. Uh, all right, next on our agenda is public comment. Uh, public comments, when you're invited to speak, please uh, clearly state your name and address and speak so that your comments can be understood by all and properly recorded. Whenever an audience or board member reads from a prepared statement, please give or email a copy to the Milburn Short Hill SID at tracy at exploremilburnshorthills.org. To help facilitate an orderly meeting and to permit all to be heard, speakers are asked to limit their comments to three minutes. Members of the public who wish to participate in the meetings may do so in person. Um, or electronically by phone or computer via Zoom. Individuals calling in will be able to fully participate in the meeting during the appropriate period, which is <laughs> now. So um, we wanna start with whoever's on, if there's anybody who's called in or Zoomed in. Hi. Three, yeah, and there's a three minute time limit to speak. Hello, uh, I'm Jean Pasternak, 342 Hobart Avenue. I'm a taxpayer and resident. I don't own a business in Milburn. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you for your volunteer efforts for Milburn. It's greatly appreciated. Well done to Shannon Cross on the $200,000 grant she got for Milburn. Uh, I think she is responsible for about 99% of that work, and we applaud her as a resident and community volunteer. I have some questions. At what date, time, and place at a township committee and SID public meeting were the Milburn Short Hills taxpayers informed that they would be funding out of their tax dollars paid to the township 
this newly formed SID for Milburn Businesses and Merchants fully for part of 2020 and then all of 2021. Did you at any time or did the township committee ever inform taxpayers like myself that half the salary of the SID executive director will be paid by them in perpetuity as long as the SID exists? When was a public hearing for the SID budget? Has the SID budget been approved by the township committee? Why was the SID budget removed from the township committee meeting agenda on two occasions? It's clear that monies have been paid out to various vendors and so forth, given your attachment and in the package to this meeting. But the SID budget, as I understand it, has not yet been approved. So these payments, are they properly authorized? If, if not, why have they been made? Is this SID form by ordinance, in fact, a hybrid SID because taxpayer monies and eventually assessments on Milburn businesses in all business zones will be blended and used to fund it? Is this allowable under New Jersey municipal statutes governing SIDs? Is Milburn SID valid under New Jersey municipal laws? Does a feasibility study for a SID or bid or whatever you call it exist? Was it presented to members of the public at a township public meeting or a SID public meeting. Ms. Pasternak, just you have about 30 seconds. Does a written legal opinion exist and who has written it as to the legality under New Jersey municipal statutes of an appointed SID board? Who reviewed and approved the executive director's contract? Why did Ryan Gleason resign within a month of his hiring? Did you agree with the board secretary when she stated that members of the public do not have the right to speak and when she posted a disparaging comment on Facebook about a member of the public who has attended the SID meetings and questioned various aspects of the SID formation Ms. and funding. Can I, can I ask you to just wrap up, please? Yep. Thank you. What actions have been taken to apprise her of the public's right to free speech at SID meetings and in her fiduciary duties as a board member regarding posting on social media disparaging remarks about members of the public? Okay. All right, um, not having those written, uh, we will uh, take a look at those questions um, and certainly get something in writing to you to the best we can answer those or forward them to, the, a lot of those are township committee questions, but we will uh, endeavor to get answers. Okay, do we have anyone else? Hi, Nancy Stone, uh, Nancy and David Fine Jewels, 266 Essex Street, and Style by Nancy and David. I represent two businesses in town. Michael and Steve, I want to thank you for uh, attempting to meet with me on Monday. Don't know what happened. I was downstairs, and for whatever reason, it, we didn't connect. I waited as well and was wondering what happened and did not see your email until later that evening. But I'm just going to read a little bit of what I had responded uh, to Michael in the email. And I do appreciate the fact that you did extend yourself to me. So, you know, the budget was taken off the agenda, kind of delayed everything now, but serious questions about the budget and that the budget was being voted on the next day. So it was crucial that meeting. And I really wanted to have that meeting so we could have reviewed the things that I was concerned about. What I wrote to you in the email was Tara should be mortified and anyone who knew of the previous DMDA budgets would vote no on the current SID budget, which is operating against state statutes. Tara voting on this budget is a direct violation of her committed efforts to be fiscally responsible. She went after the DMDA daily on the outrageous salaries that were paid to Jillian the previous ED, which was 70,000, and now clearly the 114 for salaries is more of an outrage during a pandemic. What did she improve here? Nothing, it was worse. I don't see how such little money being appropriated for the merchants are helping the merchants. The holiday event category is a non-transparent way of spending that is way too vague. I know it was done to bury the money that was being planned to give to the winter walk, no good. 
All I can hope for is that Tara lives up to a morsel of credibility and does not approve the budget and makes a motion to shut this sit down. This budget is a sham and is an embarrassment to the entire Milburn business community and the residents that are footing this bill. And I got to tell you, you guys are all volunteers as I was at the previous SID and I know how hard this is because I was part of that as well. But it's this is so much worse than what we had before. And, and just have 30 seconds. So just wrap I, Thank you, Michael. I just cannot believe that Jackie's still involved, has her finger in the pot. She is not an elected official. She needs to go. Richard absolutely does not know what he's doing with this and is making Milburn look like a fool with these hirings. And Ryan, I wish you good luck. You made the right decision. As I sent out, you're like Forrest Gump. Run, run, run. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker. Dominique Erto. Hello, good evening. Dominique Urso, 514 Melbourne Avenue. Um, I have a few points I'd like to speak about tonight. The first being on May, um, on March 9th, 2021, Tuesday at the TC meeting, my mother presented a statement regarding the franchise fees in the town budget. Raised awareness that the local government channel was not publicizing any town information. With much concern and possible and possible debate within 40 hours, Milburn Township aired the Township Committee meeting from Tuesday, March 19th. Will this board also be posting and does and does have an obligation to post the meetings for the public governmental education? Second point is uh, we continually mention our concerns regarding not only the validity of this ordinance 2561-20, and the hiring of Mr. Gleason. But has Milburn Township, past Mayor Lieberberg, and now Deputy Mayor subjected the stakeholders to a potential lawsuit for hiring Mr. Gleason, Mr. Gleason for the executive director position under false pretenses? And it's no more, no more concerning, it's more concerning that we've learned Mr. Gleason has submitted his letter of resignation Tuesday, March 9th which we are pending copy of such via Oprah request. Lastly, we along with many others have asked, is this board, if this board has legal representation, who is advising this board? Who, is, who has drafted agreements, contracts, temporary budget and providing legal advice? I leave the board with one final thought, both Mr. Parlovecchia and Mr. Weiner are graciously volunteering their time and we thank you for that. They're not acting as attorneys, which they both are. So if we have two separate tables dining in our restaurant and one of the diners is a doctor and the other, and the other starts to choke, does the doctor have consensus to save him? Thank you. And let me know if any of these questions you want me to repeat. So I can know and the public can know. If, if you could submit those in writing, Ms. Urso, um, so I, a lot of what you said were comments. So if there are specific questions, if you would email them, uh, we would have a better shot at answering. Sure, sure. But a lot of these things actually were questions. And if I email you, how does the rest of the public get those answers that I'm asking? It's not for me, it's for the public to know. Okay. So would you like me to repeat these three main questions so everyone can hear, not just my email account. I'm not going to answer them now. So that's why I asked if you would. Okay, well, I don't see why that sounds like it's shady, but okay, you proved my point. So thank you. I guess I did. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Who, who is the next speaker? Perry okay. Uh, 
I'm sorry, am I muted now? Oh, there you are. Okay, you, okay. Uh, go ahead. Ms. Okay. Okay, I just just a few moments. I probably won't even use all three. I just wanted to um, extend um, my deepest appreciation to all of you that are actually taking the time and volunteering and trying to um, find a better way and make Milburn that shiny penny once again, what we all once knew. Um, it's unfortunate that, you know, everybody knows my position, but it's also unfortunate that, you know, here we are since August still, uh, I haven't really had a, um, anybody walk through my door or willing to, you know, see how we can help and move forward. But I would like to say again, I thank everybody for their efforts. And I would like to congratulate my fellow merchants, my fellow restaurateurs within the municipality. If everybody got the Milburn Short Hills Magazine today, many of you are in there. Many of you long time uh, um, merchants did unbelievable. You, you were voted you know, the, the best, the favorite within the municipality. And guess what? You all did it without a SID. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening and continued success to my fellow merchants and restaurateurs. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Nobody else online? No. All right. Anybody uh, in the audience who wishes to speak, come on up. You have three minutes to speak. Just please uh, clearly state your name and address. Um, good evening. My name is Jeffrey Feld, 11 Alexander Lane, Short Hills, New Jersey. Um, I too want to echo everyone's thanking all the volunteers for the work they've been doing here. And I want to wish Mr. Gleason the best of luck. However, it's seven months since approximately since the ordinance was passed in August of last year. Since that time, various lawyers, not just including me, have questioned the quality of the legal advice provided to the municipality. As I pointed out on Tuesday, a major law firm has accused Milburn of acting in bad faith in, in the Mount um, Woodmont case. There are serious issues here and the public should understand that in the last two days, a docket, a law division docket number has been given to this case and this case has been assigned to the presiding Essex County civil presiding judge and he will analyze the validity of this hybrid ordinance. Some of the issues that we really have to focus on is the gap period calendar year 2020 budget. There was an appropriation of the budget, but they never went through the process of approving, having two hearings to approving that 16 or $18,000 budget. There's a serious legal question as to the validity of the $50,000 allocation under the temporary budget. There's conflicting the opinions as to that. And I think that's the judge is gonna look at. But it comes back to, and everyone's talking about the mayor Prupis ethics question. That's a side issue. The real issue is the hybrid statutory interpretation issue. My record as to statutory interpretation in the state stands I'll stand behind it. When I was a young bankruptcy attorney, I found an error in the United States Bankruptcy Code regarding the automatic stay and municipal tax liens and I forced Congress to close that loophole for the benefit of municipalities, Alex. When I, I'm not here to hurt you. I've been trying to give you offerings. There are serious questions because at the end of the last meeting, I was handed Mr. Gleason's employment contract. He had to give 60 days notice. I think it was said on Tuesday night, your last day will be May 1st. So that means that early March, not March 9th, he had to tender his resignation. And, and I'm just saying, this is a legal document. In September, both you gentlemen saying, yes, you're attorneys, but you do not represent this body. So this question is who drafted this document? Who reviewed it? This is money. There are serious legal issues. Please look at other lawyers who are questioning the legal advice that has been given to this municipality. I'm not here to hurt you. No one's here to hurt and harm everyone. It just has to be done right. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Again, Feld, can I, I just want to ask one question. You, I, I know you said the case was given a docket. Which case is that? That's the um, Bear Properties versus um, the Township. It started in the Chancery Court. But it's, for, it's just versus the Township, right? Yeah. 
because at the time I don't think the city the city existed. Who, who who represents Bear Properties? Is that the it's that's just Ken what? Gerard? I think his name is. Okay. It's, it's all on public record. And the township is the only named defendant at right? that time. Yes. Okay. And, we're, and they're still waiting for a case management conference. That's been yep. you know what's the problem is is everyone should know that Essex County is missing sixteen judges. And there's a lot of questions as to how it is, but the more important is who's been assigned. Although the record should show that you came back into session at 750. I don't think that you said that. Uh, I probably didn't. But it should so. reflect that when you did come back in. Okay, thank you. We have the recording as well. Yeah. All right, anybody else want to uh, come up? Vicki Powell, Shala, 358 Milburn Avenue. I want to tell you the uh, merchant email blast that went out was awesome. It had a lot of content in it. I spoke to a couple of my neighbors. They were very excited about it. Looking forward to seeing more content like that. I think you guys hit the ball out of the park with it. It was great. Um, going more on that, it would be nice to see when, I don't know what you're planning to send for the residents and the people that have signed up for your uh, the mailing from the all the emails that we collected. It would be great so we could start getting one of those out too. So, because, you know, I know we're starting to do some events, get some, you know, synergy up and excitement for what's happening in Milburn now that the weather's turning nice and we're having parklets and all that stuff. Let's get something out there. I would also would like to see maybe getting more press releases, maybe with the tap to do some stories on what's going on. You know, we just got the, you, you helped with the grants and, we're doing this, we're coming up with it, just get some more, you know, public uh, buy-in out there. Um, also, it would be nice maybe in the mayor's message, um, maybe once a month, if she could, if you guys can see if she can maybe put, you know, shop local, support local, restaurant local, you know, just keep in the, because that over Christmas time, that was the biggest thing I heard from people that were coming into my store shopping. We wanted to support local. So if we can get that message continuing on a broader, uh, would be great. Um, also, and then I noticed today's uh, Instagram was much better than what we've been doing, but it really needs to be more. Mm -hmm. I looked at other towns, minimum six a week in Summit, minimum of three a day in Westfield, five a week in Montclair. If um, we're gonna start this with the marketing, uh, today's post was the best post out there, but if if we're not um, uh, well versed in it, I think we need to get somebody in there to teach, mm -hmm. because this is a definite thing, and I've been saying it since day one. It needs to be improved, and it's you know, and I've I've spoken to several of you guys, and I told you about it, but maybe that Betty lady that helped did that thing in the beginning of the year. Maybe she can sit down with the um, Sid and tell them how to go about doing their social media. But I think that's definitely needs to be on, on the um, agenda. And um, I think that, oh, do we have any word on when the shopper parking permit's coming out? Yeah, um, and keep up the good work. I'm looking forward to seeing what events we're coming up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to make any comments before we get started? One more on. Okay. Hi, Mr. Footer. Can you hear us? Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, I want to join uh, some of the people in their appreciation, comments of appreciation for your volunteerism. Um, I'm in the vicinity of 50 years of volunteering in Milburn and a couple other towns. Um, so I know what it's like uh, being under fire and I appreciate the position that you're in. I would like to ask that if in the future you see a need for an executive session, uh, hearing the comment that uh, Mr. Gleason probably gave his resignation early March. Um, there could have been some provision for you to have your executive session either before or after uh, the public meeting. Um, there's not as much public attending these meetings these days and um, meetings should be moving a little bit quicker. 
and uh, to start a meeting and then pause a meeting for the public side of it uh, is a little frustrating. Uh, so the only times I've ever seen that in about 50 years, I've probably in less than less times than you can count on one hand are usually when an issue that is emergent comes up during a meeting where you have to go into executive session for legal guidance and then get back to deal with that issue at that meeting. That's usually what happens. Um, so I'm asking that if this comes up again, I know the township committee usually schedules their executive uh, sessions or closed sessions before or after their meetings, perhaps you could follow suit. I thank you and uh, have a good evening. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is that it uh, on Zoom? Yes. Okay, so we will proceed with the rest of the meeting. Uh, first topic is administrative updates. Uh, Ryan, why don't we start off with you? Uh, I know we have a couple of listed items, but uh, if you have a, an administrative update. Sure, absolutely. Um, so the first thing is the flag grant update. Uh, it, you know, we were very, very pleased that flag was able to secure a $200,000 grant um, to support frontline workers uh, and also our SID restaurants. Um, we have been working with flag to get as many restaurants as we can eligible. Um, there will be another application period for restaurants, I believe beginning April 1st. Um, so if restaurants were not able to get uh, registered and verified in the initial phase, uh, there will be another opening and we're looking forward to getting as many restaurants eligible as possible um, so that flag can purchase meals um, and go to a good cause. So it's, I think it's a win-win for everybody. I, I really wanna congratulate flag. Um, and for, you know, Michael, I know you've had a hand in it as well as Tracy in help, helping identify and apply for the grant. Um, and I think the SID deserves a lot of credit as well as FLAG in, in securing these dollars. And if uh, I, you if know. I can, so, somebody mentioned uh, Shannon Cross and Absolutely. thanking her. And I really do have to thank her and, and, and tr our own Tracy, uh, TV's own Tracy. We, you know, we... Uh, we started this a little bit before Christmas, back in the end of December, and it and it was something that came up in my email. And Tracy immediately said, uh, "You need to get in touch. With, let me put you in touch with Shannon Cross, um, who did all the wonderful flag things in the spring and, and summer of 2020." Um, and our our group was not eligible. Well, the restaurants were not eligible to apply directly as part of this uh, New Jersey EDA loan. And our group wasn't. It needed a group with some record of experience in providing uh, meals. So Tracy rightly, uh, she found the right person. And that's really uh, being a part of a volunteer group and community group. It's uh, what we rely on our people's uh, knowledge of the other people in the community, their connections and relationships. And that really got it moving in uh, and Shannon Cross had uh, wonderful energy and the ability to uh, get this to the, get this applied, uh, get an application in in about ten days. Frankly, uh, there wasn't a, a long uh, runway for this, and um, we got double what we expected. So, um, yeah, and I, hats off to really to to everybody involved, and, and uh, it's, and it's a wonderful thing for the restaurants. Really I can't good. underscore. Um, the impact that this will have. I mean, if you look at the proposed SID budget before the TC is, is around $200,000 and this is a $200,000 grant. I mean, you're, you're essentially, you know, doubling by, by leveraging a partnership, you're doubling, doubling the resources that are available for our merchants. Um, so this, this is a fantastic, uh, fantastic news. Yeah. So um, it's, a, it's a good thing. So yep, I mean, just wanted to give that little bit of history and thank all those people who really helped. Absolutely. Um, sidewalk cafe license update. Um, the township had published these, the sidewalk cafe license applications for 2021. Uh, we distributed, uh, we've had three touch points with our uh, SID restaurants. The first was we put it out in the newsletter, which went out last week. Um, I delivered about 25 
personally yesterday, hand copies, um, so that merchants had them uh, in, in time for the sidewalk cafe licenses. And they went out in a separate email to restaurateurs this morning. So all of our uh, SID restaurants should have the sidewalk cafe license application in hand. Um, the fees have been waived this year. So if any restaurateurs or eateries wanna put out tables and chairs, they just need to fill up the application with a site plan and send it back to town hall. And um, I did read uh, at a related point, the state alcohol beverage control did extend the, um, I don't know what it was called, but it was basically an extension of the outdoor uh, ABC permit, um, I think through next year, through 2022, or until restaurants are allowed to have 100% uh, indoor capacity. So. Uh, it's a big boon to, to, to all involved. Sure, absolutely. Um, third for an update is on the parklets. We've put out um, a feeler in those same newsletters. And um, a, if any restaurateurs would be interested in the parklet to get back to us, have their name on a list. Um, it's my understanding. Uh, I've been working closely with Alex and the town on putting some loose guidelines together. Um, I don't know, Alex, if you have an update on the timeline of where we stand with the parklets and how, how we're going to move forward and with that. Alex, can I just get for everybody involved? I think we all know what parklets are. I'm sure most people do, but just a 15 seconds on what a parklet is and what it provides for somebody. Sure. Um, so a parklet is when a parking space, street parking space is taken and constructed into an outdoor dining space um, safely. Um, and so uh, parklets have been popping up around all over for, for the last few years um, and, and certainly have gained popularity. Um, we wanted to extend this opportunity to restaurants this year. And for those that are interested, we do have loose guidelines at this point, um, you know, things that are going to be, you know, building materials that, should be, that can be used, that it should be flush with the curb. Uh, that it needs to be protected in a certain way. And then certainly what, what the township is going to be responsible for, what the restaurants will be responsible for, uh, and some of those guidelines. Uh, we will be ready with those uh, early next week, in which time anybody who's expressed interest to uh, Ryan and the SID uh, will reach out and speak to them directly. And so just very important that if people are interested uh, to reach out to us and uh, and let us know so that we can uh, we can get that information to them. The township committee will then have two resolutions in front of them on Tuesday, March 23rd, one uh, dealing with uh, Essex County uh, and and some paperwork we need to do with them to have parklets on county roads, as well as uh, that resolution to approve parklets and and those guidelines associated with them. Uh, but we're excited to be able to, to sort of get this out here. We're, you know, getting the materials to uh, put these up safely, uh, as well as the, the necessary guidelines for restaurants to build them in a, in a way that will add an aesthetic, um, as well as a consistency to what's being done. Alex, are these permitted in areas other than Milburn Avenue, uh, Main Street? So, for instance, um, in Short Hills train station at Chatham Road area or other places are they? Yep. So yep, I think we're, we're open to whoever's interested in evaluating their space and evaluating what what's going on there um, and 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 giving some, uh, so, you know, some opportunity there. So, yeah, of course, all all all, all the business districts over Milburn Avenue, Chatham Road, uh, whatever, wherever it may be, uh, we're, we'll take a look at it. Perfect. Uh, oh. I'll, I'll add to I have just two more points. Uh, Michael is last week we. Uh, published the Business Advocacy Committee's survey for merchants. It was in the newsletter. We encourage all our merchants and property owners to take the survey. Um, it can be found on our, our social media. Uh, we posted the newsletter there. You can get the Survey Monkey link. Um, it was also distributed via our Business Advocacy Committee. Um, we have a few responses in already. Obviously, we're looking for as many responses as we can get. Um, and this is really to help guide the Business Advocacy Committee, you know, learning what we know and don't know about the districts, um, what's important to our merchants and property owners, uh, what types of businesses are they looking to fill vacancies, that sort of thing. So it was published last week. We'd love to get more uh, responses um, and we can obviously circulate that, that link uh, in more places. Um, and finally, I do wanna say that we are continuing to move forward with the Main Street, New Jersey designation application. Um, you know, we're, we're taking it question by question. Uh, we've talked to Allison uh, Canfield at HPC and helping us with some of the questions as well. 
Um, and the deadline to submit that application is March 31st, and we're looking to submit uh, well ahead of that, that date. Uh, Chair, just, just to add to the administrative update and the question asked by the public regarding the um, resident shopper permit. Um, the resident shopper permit is on the, the final reading of the ordinance is on the agenda for March 23rd before the township committee. So it is not available until that point, um, at which time the, um, the, the application and the price will be set and, and all of that stuff. So. Okay, Ryan, any other uh, administrative That's updates? It for me. Anybody, anyone have any questions, of those uh, updates or comments? Uh, Michael? Yes, sir. Uh, Ryan, can you, can you elaborate on what the certification would, would mean for the township or in, in terms of us getting that certification? What would that open us up for? Uh, well, Main, Main Street, New Jersey is a program that's run through the Department of Community Affairs at the state. Um, the uh, department head is actually Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver. Um, and through that pro program, uh, municipalities and, and special improvement districts and Main Street communities that are designated are uh, given opportunities for certain grants that are uh, distributed through DCA, as well as technical assistance um, in helping the organization or municipalities with their Main Street programming. Um, so if, if uh, Mil the Milburn SID becomes a Main Street, uh, New Jersey town, uh, you'd be eligible for technical assistance help from the state as well as eligible for certain grants that are uh, put out throughout the year. Um, you know, there's Main Street transformation grants. Uh, I know in the past year, there has been uh, COVID grants through the Main Street program. I, I know Montclair, for example, you know, got a half a million dollar grant to do some COVID uh, relief work. And with the new stimulus bill that was just signed uh, by the president today, we know that there's going to be additional money being funneled down to the state for programs like this. Um, so I think it's important. This is the first time in, I believe, 10 years that the state will be adding new Main Street communities. Um, I think it's a great opportunity, and I, I think uh, this, this can open up for some leveraged resources. And, and just just one, just let me just follow up with you. How many community? How many townships or communities have this designation? Uh, there, there are very few. I, I believe there's about thirty currently. I'd have right. to double check that, Richard. So, so, so I, so I just want to, so I just want to make it clear that if we get this designation, it could open up the township for, you know, for all kinds of grants, hundreds of potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars of different types of grants. That, that we currently are not qualified for. Is that, is that your understanding? That's correct. All right, great. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Richard. Okay, um, good segue. Our next uh, topic on the agenda is updates from the Township Committee meeting. Uh, Mr. Wasserman and uh, well, Stephen, can I just ask you to take the wheel for now? I think you can do it from there, but I just- Sure. Me for a second, thank you. No problem. Uh, well, thank, thank you so much. Uh, well, at the township committee, we did announce that we were going to uh, that we were going to uh, take take on the the uh, SID budget uh, in the next meeting or two. Uh, we wanted we, we just wanted to make sure everybody was in you know informed that uh, our executive director you know was that we were going to be in transition. We wanted to make sure everybody was informed of that, and so we thought that we would. Uh, take on the budget, you know, in the next meeting or two. But I do want to share with you that uh, I'm confident that uh, there's there's support, uh, total support, at the township uh, committee with my colleagues, and uh, and they support our efforts, you know, support our efforts in, in our mission in terms of what we're doing. I I also uh, want to want to uh, point out that our township planner. Uh, and our in our attorneys, we're working on some proposals to um, to uh, lower the barriers, you know, for businesses to enter the township. We're looking at uh, at, at uh, zoning changes. We're looking at uh, signage, and uh, we're really we're really making an effort along with the mayor to uh, to make it easier for businesses to enter our township. And uh, and kind of do away with some some red tape that's been uh, that's been in place for for many many years. 
So I'm very confident that we're going to achieve that. And uh, that's kind of in the pipeline. Uh, the other thing I, I want to mention is that uh, is that uh, this past uh, this past Sunday um, that uh, committee woman Miggins and myself and HPC chair Allison uh, Canfield that we toured uh, Upper and Lower Milburn Avenue. Uh, we're looking at uh, some proposals to you know for streetscaping for adding lights and trees, uh, uh, you know, uh, in those two, in, initially in those two districts. And uh, we, we did take a very, uh, very uh, positive walk around and we hope to have a proposal, uh, uh, you know, in terms of spending, spending some of the SIDS money on, uh, on, on, you know, lights and trees. And uh, we, and I hope to get, you know, have a proposal for you maybe by the next meeting. And, and that kind of wraps up that kind of wraps up my uh, you know my comments. I will say that I did say at the township committee uh, meeting that I did thank Michael and uh, and some of our members for helping flag pull in that two hundred thousand dollar grant. Um, I believe it's going to wind up helping about twenty to twenty five of our restaurants with that uh, with that money. And uh, and I want to thank everybody for their service. So thank you so much. Thank you, Richard. Um, okay, moving on to our subcommittee updates. Our first subcommittee we'll hear from is marketing. So, uh, is it Tracy or Jamana taking that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Tracy. Yeah, I can just start. So, we have begun the website development process with New Frontier. Uh, they presented um, to us, myself, Jumana, Brian, and Marla, um, the initial homepage uh, recommendation. And we also began to talk about the directory function, which is obviously going to be the heart of the website. Um, they're working on, we're waiting to see a schedule for this, and we're going to be giving them feedback shortly. And we're we're really hopeful that this will be a great new online destination to really showcase all of our districts um, in a really, really wonderful and engaging way. Um, also, we're working on um, social media. We recognize that there's definitely um, some work to be done in that area. So um, I'm gonna take a more active role in um, social media, especially Instagram. And we're talking to some local um, residents and see if they can kind of help us as well in a, you know, uh, you know, just to try to improve that and bring up engagement and visibility of our merchants in all five districts. Also, I wanted to mention quickly that we market, I'm on the um, events committee too. So marketing is also working with our events to make sure that we have like, um, you know, that we're communicating and that we're, um, marketing well for all the future events that are coming up and there are some exciting events coming up for spring so that we'll be helping out the events com uh, committee with that and i think there was mentioned already about some of the recent merchant newsletters there's really a lot of very actionable opportunities there's also obviously some very specific communications going out to restaurants related to some of the items we've heard about the flag grant the sidewalk cafe licenses etc um, there has been um, an e-blast that's gone to all of the community members that signed up through the various promotions, and that's something that's going to definitely be getting launched and calendarized on a more regular basis, and we're going to really look to build up um, that, that list as well of our constituents and our, our customers. And I just wanted to add just sort of like a call out to everybody here. I know there's not a lot of us here who are listening, but just to keep spreading the word about Explore, get people to follow all the social media channels, um, advertise events that are coming up. The more we have, the more we tell of our vast networks. We all, you know, we all live in a community. We all have a vast network of a lot of contacts and friends and, and family in, in the township. Um, encourage them to come out to our events and encourage them to follow, explore, like us, share, post, do, you know, if they post a picture of an event to tag um, and even just tell their friends, come check it out. It's, it's fun. 
That's it for me. Thank you, Tracy and Jamar. Um, next subcommittee is short-term planning and events. Nadege, is that you? Start. Yes, so, um, sorry, I wasn't on my phone. I'm trying to coordinate with uh, Donna, the CEO from YIFTI, uh, for her to come on. Uh, last meeting, um, we introduced the idea of a community card, and I explained the uh, just the high level that it was redeemable uh, in all the participating store. It is free to implement. It does not require any hardware or software, and the only cost to merchants would be the regular cost of processing a card that is not present. Um, uh, today we have uh, Donna, the CEO of uh, YIFTI, who is going to speak with us uh, and uh, give a brief presentation to complement this and answer <coughs> questions if you guys have questions. She's not here. <laughs> okay. Um, she, I told her to come at 8.35, so maybe I can talk about the events sure. and then... Yeah. Um, Wait till she comes in. She, yes. Yeah wave at me um, when, she's, when she's here and I'll just stop talking. So the events, um, we uh, have um, um, two things that we wanna uh, update you on. First is we are uh, putting together a um, spring event that we're gonna call um, Spring into Melbourne Short Hills. Um, it's a gem. And the idea of this event is to be a springboard for our bigger event that we are going to run in the summer. And like Jumana said, uh, we've been talking with the marketing subcommittee to make sure that we can use this event to create a buzz and to get the community excited and the residents and the merchants to participate. So the details of the event, um, and Jackie feel, and Jumana feel free to jump in. Um, it is to um, basically deliver containers of gems to the participating merchants and encourage the uh, residents to circulate within all the participating stores and participate in a competition where they have to guess how many gems are in the jar and we're going to have very attractive prizes to make this competition interesting. Um, so there will be um, a gift card won from each of the participating store. And then we will have a mega prize um, uh, that will be um, um, uh, donated uh, in order to really attract people. We'll have a social media uh, campaign, create a buzz, get people excited to transition into our summer events, which are gonna be three big events. One in May, one in June, one in July. The May one is gonna be on the Eighth, and we've been meeting every week with our subcommittee in order to organize this. And Jackie, do you want to talk about this one? Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, we're we're kind of branding it or or referring it to as a as a, a three by three. In the morning, the first kickoff event will be May eighth in Taylor Park. The morning will be comprised of uh, a variety of fitness activities. Thank you, Marla, for already reaching out to our uh, fitness studios, gyms, yoga, uh, personal training, and, and all of them. And we plan to run a series of three, depending on your time frame, an 8 a.m., a 9 a.m., and a 10 a.m. These will be very family friendly. Uh, everyone is it's open to the public. Uh, anyone can participate and uh, come enjoy exercise, stretch, um, a meditation, uh, any and all of the above. So that will be in the morning. Uh, in the afternoon, we're planning a variety of children's activities, crafts, a balloon, um, perhaps a caricaturist, um, uh, a magician, uh, any of that, those kinds of activities that'll attract uh, parents and families to the park. Um, and then the afternoon will be a, a variety of music venues that will uh, continue into the early evening hour. This is the Saturday, May 8th. Um, it, please uh, let us all pray to the, uh, the God of sunshine that it will not be delayed, but if, if, if need be, the rain date will be the following Saturday, May 15th. And then we're planning similar events in other parts of the districts. One will be on uh, June 12th, 
10th it, it, that's a date and uh, the other one July 10th so um, there we have it um, did I miss anything uh, well I just wanted to add also that we are trying to the theme sort of was going to be uh, Mother's Day in Milburn sort of kind of since yes. it's Saturday yes. Mother's Day yes. and that's the, one of the activities that we are planning for the children let's say was going to be sort of like a, a, a project that they child could do and then that could be gifted to mom and that we're going to also encourage all uh, retailers, merchants, uh, restaurants to also maybe put on something in their own establishments uh, focused around something like that, whether it would be, let's say at the florist, maybe they can have a, a posy bouquet, bouquet that they can buy purchase for mom and chocolate works. Maybe we'll have a little mom box of chocolate, you know, things like that. And, and really kind of encourage our community to make a day of it and visit and really visit and all, all you know, merchants and maybe pick up this little 20 to $25 gift from mom from all these places in Melbourne. Well, Jamon, I think you hit on exactly what my question was. What, how do we best tie that event in to uh, getting people to stay around and walk around and how do we uh, attract people from Taylor Park to exactly. the rest yeah. of the community. Good question. So one of the ideas we talk, and again, we're all, this is all dependent on um, some of the COVID restrictions, obviously, you know, outdoor gathering, et cetera. So one of the ways since outdoor gatherings might still be limited, we were suggesting maybe we have them, if we get a magician or a, uh, or a balloon artist or whatever the case may be, they are kind of like a roving magician walking up and down the streets of our districts and, you know, and things like that. Um, and also encouraging our uh, retailers to have some kind of sidewalk sale type thing um you know i have an idea of something i could you know whatever i mean they can do whatever but as long as it's okay for my township rules that we can do some sort of like a sidewalk sale maybe come uh, thing or something like that as well just kind of make the township feel festive and you know encourage people to be outside and up and up and down our streets of milburn and shore hills although this one will be in taylor park the next one will definitely be in a different district and and the one after that again in a different district. Yeah. Correct? Did I miss anything? No, I was just wondering. Um, I don't know if we had decided what the other um, locations are yet, but there definitely will be in um, one of the other five districts. Can I ask a quick question on the gems? Yes. Uh, yes. On the gems container. Uh, in order for that to really be a success, there has to be a great deal of uh, promotion and, and communication with the community. So I agree. To do, how best can we accomplish that? Well, this is, um, I 100% agree with that. And this is part of the reason why I think I want to take a little bit of more of an active role in the social media, because this will mean nothing in, unless we have buy in from the public and engagement from the public. So um, these are just sort of will be a vehicle for us it, to kind of use that to promote. And we're also, um, now, we haven't launched it yet, but we're also in the marketing team thinking of another social media campaign that will tie into all of this. I don't know, Tracy, if we're ready to announce that part yet. But um, so, yes, we are definitely um, aware of that and think that's completely necessary for it to be of value. So we have we have Donna with us. Uh, from Yifti. Donna, you missed a great introduction. I uh, <laughs> did before. <laughs> um, so I thank you for your patience and uh, I don't, I don't want to take too much of your time. I know you've been waiting, so I'm just going to give you the floor. Wow. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here and I know it's really late, so I'll try to be super exciting for you guys. Um, <laughs> Uh, so Nadej asked me to speak about our community gift card program and sponsorships in general. So, and just take, I will just take a very few minutes to do this because I know it's super late there. So I want to grab the screen here. You'll see the Come Together Mason card here on my screen. Yes, yes, yes you can see it. Yeah, good. Okay, hopefully you don't see my cat who's trying to come to the meeting here. Um, so... The, uh, this is a basic card screen, so you'll have your own branding on this, your logo, your background image for Milburn Short Hills, and people come to this page to buy your card. You can name it whatever you want. 
they would click on this link to buy the card. This is an all digital and print program. So if someone wants something physical, they would just print it out at home. They can see how it works. They can see all the participating merchants here. And in this one, for instance, we have 80 of them. They can get a printable list of all the participating merchants. You, your organization has complete control over who participates. So um, it's all up to you to uh, invite them and then they would opt in to join. And then uh, there are some FAQs and sections for if new businesses come to town, they can apply here. Or if uh, organizations want to do bulk purchases, they could click on this give back section. There's a little button here for more info and that will come to me. And this is kind of the start of where the sponsors come in. So we've seen a lot of really generous communities participate or organizations participating in this program. For instance, local employers that use it for things like employee rewards. Uh, and they'll give them to their employees all year round for recognizing whether it's a work anniversary or uh, an employee who worked all weekend on something or you know whatever you might give a bonus, a small bonus for. A lot of companies are buying gift cards today and they're switching those dollars to community cards to keep their local dollars local. When they do that, we can give them a discount on the e-delivery fee so that their fee is reduced uh, from a dollar and five percent per gift to uh, 50 cents and three percent as you probably saw this e-delivery fee as I scrolled by that. Um, so that's one kind of sponsor and we're um, seeing hospitals give them to their essential workers, schools give them to their teachers, um, corporations giving them to their employees, you know, all kinds of different programs. Another kind of sponsor program is here where you see this program is running in Tahoe in uh, California. And you can see here for if someone buys a $25 card, they can get an additional $10 bonus gift. The bonus program here is paid for by a generous sponsor. Um, that happens to be the city of South Shore Lake Tahoe that's funding this bonus program. And uh, the bonus gifts, since it is your the sponsor's money, not the consumer's money, you, these can have deadlines to spend them. So that, you know, if you want to encourage people to get this money in circulation in your local shops and restaurants, you can put an expiration date on them of say 30, 60, 90 days, whatever you want to do can limit it by number of purchasers. So we've been running programs, bonus programs like this, anywhere from $5,000 worth of bonus funds up to you know, 100 plus thousand dollars worth of bonus funds. So it's kind of whatever size fits your community is great. Um, we've also seen pools um, of bonus programs. So in, on, in Nashville downtown, the downtown association that organized this card uh, realized that they couldn't do their normal fundraising event, their dinner party last summer. So they went to all the companies that might have bought a table at the dinner party and said, wouldn't you like to um, contribute to this program to support our small businesses instead of buying a table at the dinner party? And they raised sponsorship money from at two different levels, as you can see on this page, that recognition. Um, uh, over $100,000 of sponsor money. And that came from banks and insurance companies and law firms. You can see all their names here, mostly businesses that were able to continue operating during the pandemic and have a, a vested interest in their downtown being healthy and strong and a lot of diverse businesses there. So the bonus pool in this case is funding the Get Ones here in this Buy One Get One program. It's funding for all of these companies to give some gifts to their employees. So it got a lot of money in circulation quickly. And it's also paying the e-delivery fee. So you don't see any delivery fee here uh, because it, that money to cover that is coming out of the sponsorship program. So if someone buys this $50 card in Nashville, they just pay 50 bucks. So that's a really quick overview of sponsor programs and just the program in general. Does anyone have questions? I just have a quick question. So say I buy a $100 card 
and I only use $35 at one location. I have a balance of 65 and the next time I use it, I spend $80. So I use the 65 and then I can just do the balance on another card. Is that how it works? Yeah, the store. So the cards are redeemed as digital MasterCards. Okay. So the merchants just process them as digital MasterCards. So it's like a prepaid card. They would have to say, take $65 off this card and then ask you for another form of payment. But it's multi-use. You could use it at as many stores as you want until you run out of money on that card. And so is it just entered in, like, let's talk, I'm talking about it from like a merchant's point of view. Are they just entering in a credit card manual entry? Exactly, okay. exactly. So they do pay the card not present transaction fee on that, but that's all they're paying for the service. They're not, we're not taking a cut of the cards. They're not paying anything to participate in the program. It's free to them. They just pay their normal MasterCard processing MasterCard costs. MasterCard processing fee, okay. Yeah, correct. Other questions? Yeah, if they lose their card? Go ahead. I mean, if they print and lose, it's easy to just find online again, is that correct? Uh, yeah, so I have a support team. They can email my support team to get it whenever they want, as long as uh, we know who it was sent to. Um, we can reissue it if they if they printed it out and somehow got stolen. They can email us and say cancel this gift and re and put it on a different card. We can do that. Um, yeah. So either way. Yeah. So I was just going to ask. Could you explain a little bit more about the digital delivery fees and what what fees are applicable? Is, is it who pays that and what, you know how much are they? Sure. Sure. Of course. Um, so going, so this is a screen, this is a group that doesn't have a promotion running right now. So you don't see that buy one, get one banner. So if you bought this $25 card in Mason, Ohio, you would pay an extra um, e-delivery fee of 225. So the formula there, and if you bought a $50 card, it's 350. If you bought a hundred dollar card, it would be six bucks. So that formula is a dollar and 5%. It's modeled after when you buy a, prepaid MasterCard or Visa uh, card, same formula more or less, um, or similar, not exactly the same. Um, and that goes to Yifty. And since we're not charging the merchants and we're not charging the organizers of this program, this is how we make ends meet. So basically it allows all of your money to go to the merchants instead of um, the merchants having to pay for the program. So out of, on this $100 card, out of this $6, we would pay the processing cost on this transaction because you're probably gonna buy it with a credit card. So about half of that $6 is gonna go to the initial purchase price and then the rest is enough to keep the lights on here. If you have been reading this fine print down here, the other way that we make ends meet long-term and still not charge the merchants or the organizers is um, we're allowed to do inactivity fees on the cards. And how that works is if the card goes untouched for 12 consecutive months. So not just they've owned the card for a year, it has to be not used for 12 consecutive months. Then we're allowed to take up to $3 a month off the card balance. We try not to be evil about that. We send reminders to people to use their cards. And if they use it, you know, anytime in that 12 month period, say it's 11 months and 29 days, then that 12 month clock starts all over again of consecutive no use. So basically if they use it at least once every 12 months, the card never expires. So one, one more, I'm sorry. No, no, uh, I one, just, yeah, I just wanted to, Donna, to, you, to confirm that um, the risk on the transaction is taken by Yifty, right? If there's a card fraud, there is no risk to the merchant. Correct. Let me um, just real quick explain that. So when someone buys this card, they're going to pay for it with a credit card. Unfortunately, in the digital gift card business, there's a lot of fraud. Still bad guys with stolen credit cards that try to buy digital gift cards. We've been doing this since 2012. We're onto their tricks. We screen them out. If we do get a charge back because one got through, then Yifty takes that loss. So whenever we issue your card, it is guaranteed to be good. So the merchants can be confident that they're gonna get paid. So MasterCard will authorize the payment in their store and then MasterCard pays the merchant and Yifty pays giant MasterCard bills every day. But we're taking the fraud risk on the, on the program. Great. 
Right. Other questions? Be light. Yeah, I actually had one more. Um, you, you mentioned <laughs> that you would send reminders to somebody who hasn't used the card. And that kind of goes into my question about it, like a privacy policy and what you do with the data of the purchasers of the cards, because that means you now have their email addresses or maybe other information. So what, what, uh, what's your policy with respect to using that data? Uh, so the policy for card buyers, uh, when a card, uh, when someone buys a card, uh, they are agreeing to the privacy policy and the terms and conditions on YFD's website, which is on the footer of our website in, in glorious detail. Uh, so what uh, we are able to, because of that policy, provide the name and email address to the community. So the organizer of the card, Milburn uh, Short Hills, will have access to the names and email addresses of the card buyers. And they can send a message to them to buy more cards if they want or um, send reminders to, to use cards. We do not have the recipients of the cards do any kind of agreeing to any terms and conditions. Therefore, we are not able to provide any information about the recipients to, to anyone. It's, um, and that's because we just didn't want recipients to have to check any boxes or open any accounts or sign anything. We just want them to get their gifts without any friction. So we don't, uh, the, the messages that we send are just reminders to use their gifts. We do not sell any uh, data, email, names, nothing. That's all uh, documented in the privacy policy. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, can I, can we hear, uh, I just, you know, some, I think Tracy had brought this up at one point, I think, um, like what, what is the buy-in from the community? Can you give us some numbers or statistics from like, let's say a township that's approximately the size of Milburn Short Hills, like maybe Mason, Ohio. Um, how many, you know, what's the number? What, how, many, how much are they buying in gift cards? So it's all over the map um, and it depends on if you have matching programs from sponsors or not. Um, our typical cards have I mean, the range of the number of merchants that participate in the program is anywhere from 20 merchants to 750. Mm -hmm. The average, having said that, is about 50 or so merchants mm -hmm. that participate on a card. However, if you run, you know, Mason was bigger. Mason is doing, they have 80 merchants here. They're doing a lot of city funded programs. So they've put almost a million dollars through this program in the last year. That's unusual. Usually it's around $80,000 a year of gift card sales per community, just to give you kind of a benchmark. Okay, that's, that's useful, thank you. Sure. So, and the best sources of gift doors, if you can, if you do have some sponsors that'll chip in for a bonus pool, that's great, then consumers love free money. Um, otherwise, it's very difficult to build a consumer brand. And my recommendation is if you can get employers involved in the program to use it as their ongoing employee rewards programs and things like that, that is becomes kind of a constant hum of business all year round. Um, besides that, uh, Q4 and the holidays are the big season for the digital gift card business. Right, Donna, thank you very much. Nadesh, what's what's our next uh, step or thing to do on this? I mean, we, uh, I, 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 if you guys are willing to uh, proceed and consider voting on it, I don't know if that's on the agenda. Well, I don't think voting on it is for tonight, but uh, oh, maybe yeah, then the I think next it's just time. a decision. Yeah, if it's, we just have to decide, I think, because we are, the implementation itself is actually quite uh, seamless and Donna's team really yeah. helps with that too. So it really is for us to decide, I think, if yep. we uh, okay. want to do that. All right, so tonight was pretty. Donna, do you, I, sure. Donna, do you have like a marketing packet that we can just send to our, our potential merchants that's all included in the service? There like a, and a tutorial that they can be so they know how to use this. Yes, Great. there is. There's a so the process is 
as soon as we get the signed agreement back, there's no money that changes hands, no credit cards, just the signed agreement. We set up your portal and uh, the team can edit that with your custom images. And then we give you about 10 different marketing documents, everything from the email intro to introduce the program to the merchants to one pagers about it and one page on how to redeem, how to redeem. And then, you know, we'll have one pagers for Mother's Day and Father's Day and graduation and all kinds of stuff. So we try to save all the communities from having to reinvent those wheels. We have about 237 communities now live um, and growing. So, it, are there any close to us here in New Jersey that you're? Are you privy? Are you allowed to share that who's who's using this? Oh this gosh, there are several in New Jersey. Um, okay. I can get that information to you guys off right. the top of my head. You know, I can think of Frenchtown and some others, but I, I, I'll do a better job if I take it offline and send you a list. Right. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And what I think we would like to do on our end is probably just run this through uh, our merchants and and uh, then we can come back. And if it's appropriate to take action on it at our next meeting, we can do it at that time. But I think some uh, discussion with our merchants would be good, but it's, it was a great presentation. For sure. That's great. Um, and there's a slide deck also that uh, that you can have to share with them to kind of show them how it works. Thank you very much. Thank thank you. Awesome. Thank Thanks you. for bringing the opportunity. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, thank you so now. much. She's great. Yeah. So uh, I think that's yeah. fair for, you know, between yeah. now and then we just have our discussion with uh, merchants around town. All right. Move, uh, if we can move on to business development and advocacy, that's uh, Jackie yeah. and Richard. Yeah. yeah. No, you can take it. Uh, the business advocacy uh, committee met back uh, end of February. Ryan uh, provided us with a vacancy list updated. We are working also on the packet for um, to attract new businesses, sort of a manual, what they need to do uh, to kind of get up and running in Melbourne. It's something that other communities have. As Richard mentioned earlier, we're looking at some of our zoning um, uh, restrictions or um, barriers to entry. So it, the, the document that will be provided to potential merchants will be a little bit fluid as we continue to update our own uh, bylaws and rules and regulations within the township zoning restrictions. Ryan, did I miss anything? Do you want to add anything in there? Uh, no, just also that we have uh, the survey went live and that we're continuing to uh, have what we want people to take the survey. Um, but I think you nailed it, Jackie. We're, we have a, we're working on the vacancy list and the new business packet, um, as well as with the township on the different zoning regulations. So uh, I, I felt we had a really great meeting and I uh, hope we can push all those projects forward. Richard, would you yeah. like to add anything? Uh, I kind of touched on it before. I think that... Um... There's definitely consensus on the township committee that we want to do this and we want to do it relatively quickly. Uh, we, it's going to involve a number of different different uh, moving parts in terms of permitted use, um, you know, uh, you know, fees, parking. Uh, so we're looking at a number of different things, and everything is being worked on, uh, you know, right now with our professionals and. Um, I would hope in the next, you know, really maybe maybe by the next meeting we'll have, uh, you know, we'll have a more clarity in terms of, uh, you know, when the township will be, uh, you know, when the township committee will be uh, voting on on this new package of, uh, you know, of uh, zoning, you know, zoning uh, rules. So so we're going to be looking at it very carefully in the near future. Okay. Thank you both very much. Um, our next item is bylaws. Tracy, what do we have on, on this? Yeah, we have an item that we wanted to briefly discuss, which is um, the question of the um, advisory board that is part of the ordinance and the bylaws. This was kind of something that was in the ordinance that was just kind of in essence inherited um, you know, from the ordinance 
and as I said, is in, um, just looking here for a second, is in our bylaws for the first year, well, first year plus a little, um, what it denotes in our bylaws is that the advisory board would be recommended by the SID Board of Trustees and appointed by the Township Committee. Um, thereafter, the Board of Trustees would elect the members of the advisory board. Um, you know, with all that's been happening, this is something we haven't um, conducted this process as of yet. So we are at the point where just want to do um, and obviously we want to comply with our bylaws and operate in the spirit of them. So we want to just regroup on this. So there really seem to be a couple of options out there. So one is it's not really clearly clarified in either the ordinance or the bylaws exactly what the function of the advisory board is. I think our assumption is that it would be a group of people that would be a sounding board and, and supporters. Um, for the SID, we've said very importantly, this would be a good group on which to have greater representation from the non-downtown districts, since it just so happens that um, the folks on the board that are from the business and the property owner community happen to be from downtown. Um, so there's kind of two approaches we can take, and I really wanted to put this out to the group. One is we have compiled a list of about 17 people um, a mix of people from across the different districts, others in the community that have come with, um, you know, good questions, good suggestions, expressed interest in supporting the mission that would be potential folks um, for this group that we could go out and um, confirm if they're interested. And if they are, we could present at our April meeting a list of possible people to recommend to the township committee. The other possible suggestion that Ryan raised, he felt that it really was not that clear in the ordinance or in the bylaws what the role of this function is. And also we have several new township committee members is should we first get some more input from the township committee, being that they're the ones that will ultimately appoint this board about what they see the function as being. Um, so I really, just want, I, I guess we wanted to raise this to the group because it has been um, an outstanding item and see what is recommended between those two approaches. So I guess the first approach is assuming the role as I explained it and moving ahead, we have a recommendation of a bunch of people confirming if they're interested and if so, bringing that list for, um, consensus at the April meeting after which it would go to the township committee. The other is to not rush into this given so many other moving pieces right now and get some more um, information and input from the township committee and more clarification around the roles before we go ahead and move ahead with people. So what does everybody think? Tracy, I, I, my recommendation at this point is I, I, in as much as you'd want to hear from the township committee, uh, uh, I think it's, what do we think we need? Uh, what, what would be most advantageous for the, the uh, mission of the board? And maybe it's something that we uh, think about and put the right people in place because we could appoint somebody to advisory board, but if we don't really know what they're gonna do, then that's, you know, that everybody gets frustrated. So, uh, and, and maybe we could use our liaison, not only uh, Alex, but, uh, Richard as, as a liaison to the township committee and maybe work through that way. And, uh, but I think your idea of having, uh, getting in touch with, with uh, interested parties between now and April is probably a good idea as well as uh, thinking about what would be the best use of the talent and time of these people. Okay, other thoughts from anybody? Well, I kind I kind of agree with uh, Michael. I think that we should look at what our, you know, how we want to work and mm -hmm. uh, how we can work effectively. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. We've been working very effectively in different subcommittees. You know that we've taken on different challenges, and we have our our you know our members in, in different groups working towards a goal. And I I think that we should really think about how we would how we could best utilize new resources, new people, and um, 
and maybe maybe build it, you know, build it that way, you know, because I think that the ordinance, you know, we kind of inherited some of this. And uh, but let's let's think about how how could we bring in new talented people and put them to work for the benefit of the township, you know, for for the work that we're doing. Um, I I, I kind of like the committee the committee roles that we have right now because we have different groups working towards towards our mission. And um, and I'm just thinking that maybe maybe we should orient it that way, but but maybe we need a little more discussion. Yeah, and just by the way, Richard, I mean those those two functions tie together because um, some of the folks that are really stepping up on some of the subcommittees are people. Are some of those are the folks that are nominated for the advisory board. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's overlapping. It's all it's overlapping. Yeah, and a lot of people have approached me, and I I can't wait to bring them in because we could use the help and. And they're extremely talented and uh, yeah. you know, amazing people in the community that want to help us. And we just got to find a place for them. And maybe we'll change the ordinance. You know, maybe I'll submit you know, uh, a change so we, so we can use those people. These district. I, we had also talked about these district captains at, at, at one point. Do you, do you think that that would be something separate and apart, or could this be part of the advisory board? I mean, my personal thought is, I don't think we can have too many different roles. Like we already have the subcommittees and we've already said that a key part of this advisory board would be representatives from the different districts. Right. Um, I mean, to me, a perfect example would be, we have the idea like the YIFTI card, that if we had the advisory board in place, that would be a group of people that we could then go to to get input, you know, a kind of a, from a representative right. from a section of folks. So, you know, I think there's ways that we can already envision how we would use this. That's just my personal thought. So, um, and how many how many people do you think is the right number for this advisory board? I mean, the based on this pretty wide range in the bylaws that it says between seven and fifteen members. Right. We have right now, but you know, we had the, the, the whole board has been inputting kind of recommendations of people. And there's, I think there's 17 people on that list, but then we still need to talk to those folks to confirm if they're interested. So, you know, it kind of might naturally, you know, we'll see evolve. what kind of naturally evolves. All right. Any other thoughts? Who, who would set the bylaws for this ad advisory uh, board? Like, is that something like, is, are they subject to our bylaws or do they have their own set of bylaws? And I mean, they're an advisory board, they're covered within- They're covered within our, our own, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, the only thing I might add is like, it, 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 maybe you guys are saying it and I'm just not really kind of getting it, but as long as I would have an objective or something that we want to accomplish before we bring them in as opposed to bringing them in and finding something for them. Just because I think if you bring them in and you don't necessarily have a clear objective or clear thing that you want them to do, it might you, you might kind of spend that capital. And then when you need it down the road, you know, they're like, well, you know, I've already moved on. I don't, I just, it's not, I guess it's not clear to me like well, what they would do if we brought them on today. Well, I would say, can I, I sorry, I mean, I, I would say one of the things that they would do is what Tracy had mentioned is that let's say if the advisory board at least comprise at the very least representative of each of the, you know, one at minimum, maybe two of each of the different districts and they could help advise on what, how to better serve their districts. I mean, that's definitely one way they would, could be utilized, I think. Yeah, I'm feeling like of the people that have been recommended are kind of falling into two groups. One are business people from the four districts outside of downtown, which we've said is not represented enough on our board. And then the other groups are people that are on subcommittees that are kind of playing leadership roles. Yeah. So it's kind of more kind of just formalizing in some ways. So it's more well, we do. Uh, like I understand the, the 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 district captains or whatever you want to call them, and I think that's probably smart because you know what I need in downtown isn't what somebody in Chatham Road needs. But I guess I I was thinking of it as like almost like bringing in people because you wanted help marketing, but we don't have anything to market. But I guess that I was just misunderstanding. Well, we have the marketing subcommittee. I think this is kind of more of a general you know, overseeing the whole, I mean, it's advisory awards. So I don't know, that's how I looked at it, but 
Um, I don't know. Maybe they'd have a dual. What if they had a dual function? You know, maybe they, you know, we bring in, bring them in, but we change it so that they'd have to serve on a subcommittee. You know, well, like, a lot of them do. Yeah, yeah, that's not a bad idea that the uh, people on the advisory board are I agree, on a subcommittee. Yeah, because I agree with Andrew. Like, you don't want to bring them in to bring them in to. Yeah, and I think that's that's how we started off. Is let's figure out what it is we want to do rather than kind of yeah. out all the possibilities and then. You know, maybe maybe create some silos of, of events and and maybe they're ad hoc kind of uh, things, you know, as we have um, like a Mother's Day event, which seems like it's going to be a big undertaking. We're going to need something for that and uh, and maybe, you know, work in with the people from the different districts um, as, mm -hmm. as we maximize the, the success of that. Mm -hmm. um, OK. All right. Um, I just want to move on to the next, it's getting a little late, move on to finances with Stephen and their expense review, which has been provided, I think. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, this time of night, who, <laughs> I'll be sure to read every line of this report. No, yeah. we uh, posted the expenses uh, from February 10th through March 9th. They were on our website. High level summary, um, it's can marketing for, for uh, Marla services. Uh, executive director services are now on here. There's a kind of a bucket of uh, membership fees, uh, working with Ryan to join downtown New Jersey, National Main Street Center, um, and then kind of our monthly fees around email services and web hosting services. Uh, some A few expenses around supporting that Lunar New Year project uh, that we had conducted and over the winter, winter gift basket project. Um, the balance in the checking account as of March 9th, was $54,147.38. And that includes, it's, it's larger than the last time. And that includes the, uh, the, the uh, extension. We had a $50,000 kind of a preempt, uh, Alex, I'm not sure what you call it, but a uh, temporary, budget. temporary budget payment uh, that was deposited. So that's about it. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, all right, as we come around the corner here, it's. Uh, any board comments uh, before we wrap up or announcements, which kind of similar issues? Any announcements to be made? Any, I know Tracy, you usually have your ear to the, the track on new businesses coming in or on, you know, the other, the flip side of that, old businesses going out. I usually do. I don't know if I've heard anything new. I know I heard informally of a new restaurant possibly coming. Um, I just saw that sign that went up behind my shop, the spring. Uh, that was the yeah. one I was thinking of. Yeah, can yeah. you mention that one, Jumana? Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if it's, I just happened to see that they put a sign up. I heard that they might be coming. Um, I think it's like a, a soup kind of place. Yeah, um, spring bone. I looked it up, it looks really think, cool. It's it like looks a cool, bone but like. Yeah, but I don't see a lot of activity happening in that space, so I'm not sure. Right. But the sign, there's a sign up, so, you know, yeah. How about, this is my own ignorance, on Morris Avenue, the old wine store um, that has construction going on. Yeah. Is, is that ours? So, is Urgent that ours care. or Springfield? That's ours, ours, isn't it? That's ours, yeah. Yeah, that's ours. P that'll P be a pediatric, pediatric care, okay. like an urgent care type place. Okay, got it, thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's oh. an urgent care, that's yeah, right. That oh, an urgent care, that's interesting. I have been wondering what's happening at the poor building that the car crashed into that's like behind. Oh, yeah. Boarded up. Yeah. yeah, well, that was, I think that was in process of being under construction anyway. And then um, when that happened, certainly changed the, the uh, complexity of, of that project. Okay. Um, so I think the owner is just working through that right now in terms of insurance and things like that. And I'll, I'll mention that uh, the township committee has voted that uh, Main Street will be closing weekends, uh, weather permitting, as of the first weekend in April. So first weekend uh, in April. The first weekend in April, uh, Main Easter Street. Weekend, yeah, coinciding with Easter. Yeah, coinciding with Easter. Uh, yes. So weather weather permitting. Uh, so uh, so that's going to be that's going to be starting right around the corner. Exciting. 
Hope great. we get more days like today and tomorrow. That'd yeah. be great. Yeah. All right. If uh, I, I kind of uh, melded board comments and announcements, uh, if there's nothing else, um, I can we can get a motion to adjourn the meeting. A motion. Second. Adjourned. Thank you all. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.